Hi, my name is Jonah. I work for Ecolibrium Solar, where we develop mounting systems that hold solar panels to the roof. Today we are here with Internachi to help home inspectors spot defects on solar electric systems. We're here in our Ecolibrium lab out in Boulder, Colorado, where we develop new racking products and test those products to UL2703 certification. First, we'll go over the components to a solar electric system, so let's go take a look. So now we are on our demo roof looking at a typical solar electric installation. The first component you're gonna notice is the panel itself, referred to as modules in the solar industry. The solar panels turn the sun's energy into DC electricity, which can then be used by the house. These modules are framed, meaning there's an aluminum frame around the glass. You may find frameless modules on a system, either on a house or an awning. There are solar thermal systems which are out there. An easy way to tell if it's solar electric or thermal is by looking at the modules. Also, an electric system will have electrical wire run leaving it, and a solar thermal system will have a plumbing run leaving it. What we're looking at here is a flush-mounted solar array. An array is a collection of solar modules or panels. This array is flush-mounted, meaning it is not tilted up off of the roof. You may find a system that is tilted up off of the roof. There may be a system on a carport or an awning. You may also have a system on a flat roof, which is ballasted or held down by bricks or blocks, which is likely also tilted up. But what we're looking at here is the most common system that you'll see out there. You'll notice these panels are framed, meaning there's an aluminum frame running around the glass. You may see frameless modules, typically on a carport or awning, but also you may see those on a pitched roof. What the module does is it turns the sun's energy into DC electricity that can then be inverted into AC electricity and used by the house. So also, uh, these panels are held down to the roof by a railless mounting system. This happens to be our EcoX railless mounting system. It's comprised of a aesthetic and structural skirt in the front, as well as a series of clamps and roof attachments and brackets that essentially hold the panels together to create an array and also secure that array to the roof. This system is rafter attached. You may see a rafter attached system or a deck attached system. The easiest way to tell if it's attached to rafters or just the decking is by measuring between two attachments. And if that measurement follows a common rafter spacing, it's likely a rafter attached system. If that measurement is nowhere near a common rafter spacing, it's likely a deck attached system. This system is flashed, so you'll notice a metal flashing underneath the roof attachment for waterproofing. Some of the older systems out there may not have a flashing. It might be something to take note of. What you may see on the roof underneath the panels is what I have in my hand here. This is a power optimizer, which is mounted to the back of the panel, or if it's a railed system, it would be mounted to the rail. These would all be underneath the array. So you could see them by looking from the side of the array. What this does is it maximizes the output of the solar panel. You also may see microinverters, which look very much like this unit. The microinverter actually inverts that DC electricity from that individual panel into AC electricity that can be used by the house. These are more and more common on more recent installations that you may see. Some other things you might find on the roof that we don't see here. Pest control is a common option for homeowners in certain regions where squirrels or pigeons may like to roost underneath these arrays. That would just be some sort of perimeter around the edges of the array that would prevent an animal from getting underneath. You may also find snow guard or some snow retention system that is actually on top of the array. And that's most likely seen over a driveway in areas with snow or a walkway where falling snow could be a hazard. So for educational purposes, let's take a look underneath one of these solar panels. You definitely would not be doing this on a typical home inspection, but let's just see what's underneath here. So here we have the back of the panel. The panel's going to have a junction box where the leads come out of the panel carrying the DC energy. This here is an example of a power optimizer, which manipulates the power coming from the panel to the optimum voltage to get the best power output. You may also see a microinverter, which would look something like this, and the panel would also be plugged into that microinverter. And then out of the optimizer, in this example, we have leads that are used to connect to the panel on one side, and then this lead would then be connected to the panel on the other. On a microinverter, there may be a different type of cabling, but the panels will be connected together in one way or another. <laughs>